and like people according to the treatment of how they are with you so it's making sure you come out into the real world but not with an ungendered bias view of human behavior what are the downsides of being a very attractive woman or a man a very attractive woman is you are automatically disliked by men and women. It's an automatic response you get. And um, people think that, oh, all men like you. It doesn't always work that way. You've got to remember there's a lot of men that resent the women that they can't access. And what I mean by that is they see a beautiful woman and because they assume she's not going to like him back, they automatically feel, especially with this whole red pill movement, they automatically feel like they need to humble her. The, the reaction attractive women get is the world thinks that she needs humbling even if she is humble so they feel totally entitled to obliterate her self-esteem there's so much more kind of reaction to when Kylie Jenner posts a picture it's so easy to be like fake disgusting bad lips blah blah, blah. but when somebody unattractive posts a picture nobody would feel that it's justified to actually say any of her flaws so what happens is as an attractive person you almost have to go through life being more torn apart for your looks than you are praised because people automatically assume that you yeah. need humbling I've noticed that too in real estate. Um, it seems like a lot of the attractive realtors mm -hmm. have trouble being taken seriously by their clients. It's, yeah. it's almost like they have to work twice as hard yeah. um, to be seen as an equal. They do. And, but the thing is, if they want to, they can lean into their privilege. I'm not saying it's all bad. If you want to, you can also work a tenth as hard and get the sale because you can lean into your but privilege. But then you get people pretending that they want to buy a house. Because yeah, I've, I've, that's I've that's seen that's it all. Yeah. And they're with these time waster of clients. Waster. And, I, and, and everyone could see it. And yeah. there's that small glimmer of hope. That, hey, you know what? Maybe there's a 5% chance they find a house they like. Yeah. But then you get people that just want to waste your time. Yeah. And constantly just like dates and... Uh, I knew a few realtors that would wear a wedding ring mm -hmm. because they would think that, hey, if I'm at an open house, I'm not going to get these fake buyers coming in. Yeah. And even with the ring, it, it wouldn't make that big of a difference. Like yeah. guys would not care, which is wild to me. You what would think that you would, would just you respect that. What advice would you give a girl if she was in real estate? What advice would you give her? How does she... You, you have to have a great BS detector. Yeah. Like that's the one thing. And you only get that by getting burned a lot. Like yeah. when I first started... Uh, I was 18 years old and I have a lot of people who would like to work with me because I couldn't tell if they weren't serious or not. So if someone wanted to see a $5 million house and pretend to be you know, a buyer, I'd believe them because I had no way of telling the difference between a real buyer and a fake buyer. I just the warning signs uh, that in hindsight, I could look back and be like, this person is so fake. Every time they start talking about themselves, oh, I do this and I do this. And I'm looking for a house for this. Like the real buyers are so quiet. Yeah. The real buyers are like, I am in this price point. I want this specific area. If it doesn't fit this, I'm not going to waste my time. Mm. I'm really busy. I can't see the house until like this time. And it's too, like those are the real buyers. That's true. The fake ones are just like, oh, I want to see this. Or, oh, that's okay too. And they'll just, it's usually people talking about themselves yeah. nonstop and trying to hype themselves up. And yeah. like, so as a beautiful woman, if you want to avoid those kind of time you wasters, to, you just remember that the more they talk, the less they'll do. Usually. usually. It's, just, it's just getting a sense of the person's demeanor. Yeah. They feel like they have something to prove. Yeah. Like those who are just... Yeah, exactly. How, how like would when, you take a beautiful woman serious? What could she do in the workplace that would make you take her more serious? And say if she enjoyed... I would say it's mostly demeanor. Demeanor. It's like, yeah, you've, you've met some like... Are you a successful man who has achieved endless heights in his career? Are you somebody who's absolutely made it in his professional life, but his personal life just doesn't seem to match up? Are you somebody who goes through intense highs in business, but intense lows in your personal relationships? You might be somebody who has been blocking out relationships or entering relationships where you don't feel appreciated or it's lacking the sexual or emotional intimacy that you require. If this sounds like you, then I have a program specifically catered to your needs. I've been helping high-end clients for a really long time and I'm able to identify the exact problems, the exact causes, and the exact solutions. So if this sounds like you, then please feel free to register below your details. Yeah. Those who are just yeah, exactly. How, how like would you take a beautiful woman serious? What could she do in the workplace that would make you take her more serious? And say if she enjoyed I would say it's mostly demeanor. Demeanor. It's like, yeah, you've you've met some like female realtor powerhouses and like mm -hmm. If if I walk into their office, like I'm intimidated. It's okay. just like they have this aura of confidence around them uh, <laughs> that, like, you walk in and they mean business, and they are sharp, and they are aggressive negotiators, and they're like, 
very strict. Okay. Tr- like that for me, from what I've seen, is like highly effective. Yeah. And that's why some of the best realtors in Los Angeles, they're they're women. They're not they're not men. Same they're in, women. Same yeah. by uh, the best ones are out there. So it depends if you want to lean into it or not. But I think that's great advice. Have an aura about you where you can't, yeah, like they can't just go straight to flow. Yeah. 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 And and just also not believing everything they're told. Yeah. Like you could tell immediately when when someone walks in and you're and you're with a powerhouse like that. Yeah. Someone walks in and starts talking about themselves. They dismiss them or they shoot them down so quickly. They start questioning what they say. They'll uh, like like one buyer I brought into an open house, and this this lady was a powerhouse. The same sort of deal, but knew uh, pulled me aside after like two minutes. I was like, hey, by the way, that buyer's fake. Mm-hmm. It's not a real buyer. I could tell immediately. I've been doing this for twenty years. Mm-hmm. Don't waste your time with this person. I'm telling you now because like I don't blame you. Like mm-hmm. I'd be in the same position as you, but like person is fake. And then that person walked back in and she just shot this guy down like immediately. Mm -hmm. The guy showed proof of funds. Yeah. And she she just just, obliterated this thing. So I think a lot of it is confidence, demeanor, and having a BS detector. And does it just is it just favorable? Handsome men, I heard that handsome men, like handsome tall men, are trusted easier. Yeah. But I think it's the same thing. I mean, people are still going to waste their time. Do you know what I find in relationships, since handsome men, um, they don't necessarily end up with the most beautiful women. And I think it's two reasons. Firstly, um, where the normal man would have to go pursue women, handsome men get into this zone of life where women come to them, they, which is a very uh, like trippy kind of way of experiencing it. But women come to them. So they are used to the it being that way around. So when a woman's not approaching them, they assume she's not interested. They don't realize the natural pursuit is he should be chasing or he should be initiating the other thing I find with handsome men because they don't require as much female validation because they get it so much they look more for a woman that treats them well rather than just a woman that looks fantastic they focus on the treatment that they receive from a woman far more than they would by the status symbol of her being super attractive because they've already got that status symbol so I feel like with handsome men they end up with women who truly like who chase after them rather than who they chase and they they focus on how a woman is treating them more so than anything they they find I feel like they're not always with their absolute equivalent but they're with women who are true they do get very loyal women because women are loyal to looks far more than you realize women who feel like they're punching above their weight seem very loyal to their man whereas women who believe that they are compromising are still got their eyes open when a woman's punching above her, her weight especially in looks not finances in looks she tends to be hyper loyal why do so many people compromise in relationships I think we have to. In real life, I think we really do have to. I think we should. And I don't think compromise is a bad word. And I don't think settling is a bad word. I think it's it's really important to know when and how to compromise. What will get you perpetually single is when you don't, either you get it too wrong, you're either compromising too much when you're getting bad treatment or you're not compromising at all. But I think it's good to have a healthy level of compromise. If you're aging as like, let's say a man or a woman, you might have to accept that your partner is going to have children from a previous marriage or you might except that they might have been divorced. You have to have some level of healthy compromise, even if you don't have children, even if you haven't been divorced. You have to have some healthy level of compromise is essential, but just as long as the compromise isn't causing you to compromise on your deal breakers. Just remember your deal breakers and don't compromise on them, but everything else is negotiable. Now, what about when it comes to breakups? What's the fastest way that you've seen to be able to get over a breakup? Um, you remind yourself of the vision you have for yourself in the future. And let's say, for example, your vision is, I want to be a really successful man and I want to be married with kids and I want to be able to trust my wife. And if that person fits into that vision, fantastic, you can try and make it work. But if that person doesn't align with where you see yourself in the future, then instead of holding on and trying to mold over them and worry about them, you try and just remember your vision and just be happy for the person and be like, I hope she meets somebody who's right for her. And it's really tough to do that. But we can't be moaning and missing someone and be happy for them at the same time. If you truly love someone, you'll be like, I hope she finds someone who is good for her. But me personally, I've got this particular vision. She doesn't fit that vision. She's great for me now, but she's not going to be aligned with me in the future. So I hope she meets someone who's uh, good for her right now and And I can try and let go of my ego. Who takes it worse? Who takes breakups worth, men or women? I think men do. I really do. I think because it, it, it breaks their ego a lot. They're so ego driven. Whereas for women, I feel like they can fill the hole of a breakup quite quickly with friends, family. Even if they get into another connection, they can kind of fill that void. With men, they seem to, it hits them later, but it hits them deeper. So the first couple of weeks, the first couple of months, they kind of enjoy their free 
freedom or whatever it is. But when they realize they don't have, because like I was saying, women have so many social supports, their friends, family, this, that, and the other. When they, when it sinks in that they have no one to talk to at the end of the night or have they have no one checking in on them or no one's cared if they've like, how they're feeling anymore, then it sinks in and then they wallow on it a lot more than women do in the long run. There's the age-old question, and I feel kind of like dirty even asking this. So, Gigi, I'm sorry. This is my grandma. She watches. Oh, Gigi. Is that her name? Her, yeah. Her name's Linda, but we call her Gigi. Uh, Hi, Gigi. Hi, Hi Gigi. Um, the amount of partners, aka body count, yeah. does this matter? And mm. if so, who does it matter more to? I would say it's generally understood that it matters more to the guy mm -hmm. than it does to the girl. Do you find this to be true or inaccurate? I think the main thing I, I've kind of said before about body count is that I think it's uh, having an arbitrary number is not very useful because firstly, you're never going to be able to get the truth out of men and women. Yeah, Men might inflate it, women might deflate it. You can't get the truth out of them. But what, like I said, the, the relationship with body count is you really have to look at your partner's relationship with sex. Now, if you have a woman that will say yes to anybody that gives her attention, anyone who makes her feel loved, Loved. anybody that does that if that's been the main cause of her body count the main reason of her body count is a drunken night out or the main cause of her body count is because she was feeling low and someone comforted her then that's a, a red flag it's what caused the body count or if it's a man who's been on dating apps for years and years and just will hook up after hook up pleasure seekers then the body count really really matters but if you are looking at somebody whose body count was built on strong connections it was built on like you know they really had a relationship with that person they constantly are saying no to lots of people more than they're saying yes then the then that person is a little bit more trustworthy so it's really more their relationship with sex there's some men i know that might be 35 years old and two girls now that might sound like a really low body count might sound great on paper but what if that guy is super overweight doesn't have a job content not only that but you can also message me anytime and receive a response within 20 yeah those who are just yeah exactly how, how would you take a beautiful woman serious what could she do in the workplace that would make you take her more serious and say if she enjoyed I would say it's mostly demeanor. demeanor it's like yeah you've you've met some like female realtor powerhouses and like mm -hmm. if if I walk into their office like I'm intimidated it's okay. just like they have this aura of confidence around them <laughs> uh that like you walk in and they mean business and they are sharp and they are aggressive negotiators and they're like very strict okay. in terms, like that for me from what I've seen is like highly effective yeah and that's why some of the best realtors in Los Angeles they're they're women they're not they're not men same they're in, women same yeah by uh, the best ones uh, there so it depends if you want to lean into it or not but I think that's great advice have an aura about you where you can't yeah like they can't just go straight to flame. yeah 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 and and just also not believing everything they're told yeah. like you could tell immediately when when someone walks in and you're and you're with a powerhouse like that. Yeah. Someone walks in and starts talking about themselves. They dismiss them or they shoot them down so quickly. They start questioning what they say. They'll, uh, like, like one buyer I brought into an open house and this, this lady was a powerhouse. The same sort of deal. But knew, uh, pulled me aside after like two minutes. I was like, hey, by the way, that buyer's fake. Mm -hmm. It's not a real buyer. I could tell immediately I've been doing this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Don't waste your time with this person. I'm telling you now because like, I don't blame you. Like mm -hmm. I'd be in the same position as you, but like the person is fake. Okay. And then that person walked back in and she just shot this guy down like immediately. Mm -hmm. The guy showed proof of funds. Yeah. And she, she just obliterated this thing. So I think a lot of it is just confidence, With demeanor, handsome, and having a BS handsome detector. Handsome men, does it just, is it just favorable? Handsome men, I heard that handsome men, like handsome tall men are trusted easier. Yeah. But I think it's the same thing. I mean, people are still going to waste their time. Do you know what I find in relationships since handsome men? Um, they don't necessarily end up with the most beautiful women. And I think it's two reasons. Firstly, um, where the normal man would have to go pursue women, handsome men get into this zone of life where women come to them, they, which is a very uh, like trippy kind of way of experiencing it. But women come to them. So they are used to the it being that way around. So when a woman's not approaching them, they assume she's not interested. They don't realize the natural pursuit is he should be chasing or he should be initiating the other thing I find with handsome men because they don't require as much female validation because they get it so much they look more for a woman that treats them well rather than just a woman that looks fantastic they focus on the treatment that they receive from a woman far more than they would by the status symbol of her being super attractive because they've already got that status symbol so I feel like with handsome men they end up with women who truly like who chase after them rather than who they chase and they they focus on how a woman is treating them more so than anything they 
they find I feel like they're not always with their absolute equivalent but they're with women who are true they do get very loyal women because women are loyal to looks far more than you realize women who feel like they're punching above their weight seem very loyal to their man whereas women who believe that they are compromising are still got their eyes open when a woman's punching above her, her weight especially in looks not finances in looks she tends to be hyper loyal why do so many people compromise in relationships I think we have to. In real life, I think we really do have to. I think we should, and I don't think compromise is a bad word, and I don't think settling is a bad word. I think it's it's really important to know when and how to compromise. What will get you perpetually single is when you don't, either you get it too wrong, you're either compromising too much when you're getting bad treatment or you're not compromising at all. But I think it's good to have a healthy level of compromise. If you're aging as like, let's say a man or a woman, you might have to accept that your partner is going to have children from a previous marriage, or you might except that they might have been divorced. You have to have some level of healthy compromise, even if you don't have children, even if you haven't been divorced. You have to have some healthy level of compromise is essential, but just as long as the compromise isn't causing you to compromise on your deal breakers. Just remember your deal breakers and don't compromise on them, but everything else is negotiable. Now, what about when it comes to breakups? What's the fastest way that you've seen to be able to get over a breakup? Um, you remind yourself of the vision you have for yourself in the future. And let's say, for example, your vision is, I want to be a really successful man and I want to be married with kids and I want to be able to trust my wife. And if that person fits into that vision fantastic, you can try and make it work. But if that person doesn't align with where you see yourself in the future, then instead of holding on and trying to mold over them and worry about them, you try and just remember your vision and just be happy for the person and be like, I hope she meets somebody who's right for her. And it's really tough to do that. But we can't be moaning and missing someone and be happy for them at the same time. If you truly love someone, you'll be like, I hope she finds someone who is good for her. But me personally, I've got this particular vision. She doesn't fit that vision. She's great for me now, but she's not going to be aligned with me in the future. So I hope she meets someone who's uh, good for her right now and And I can try and let go of my ego. Who takes it worse? Who takes breakups worth, men or women? I think men do. I really do. I think because it, it, it breaks their ego a lot. They're so ego driven. Whereas for women, I feel like they can feel the whole of a breakup quite quickly with friends, family. Even if they get into another connection, they can kind of feel that void. With men, they seem to it hits them later, but it hits them deeper. So the first couple of weeks, the first couple of months, they kind of enjoy their freedom or whatever it is. But when they realize they don't have, because like I was saying, women have so many social supports, their friends, family, this that and the other when they when it sinks in that they have no one to talk to at the end of the night or have they have no one checking in on them or no one's cared if they've like how they're feeling anymore then it sinks in and then they wallow on it a lot more than women do in the long run there's the age-old question and i feel kind of like dirty even asking this so gigi i'm sorry this is my grandma she watches oh gigi is that her name yeah her name's linda but we call her gigi Uh, hi gigi hi gigi um the amount of partners aka body count yeah Does this matter? And Mm. if so, who does it matter more to? I would say it's generally understood that it matters more to the guy Mm -hmm. than it does to the girl. Do you find this to be true or inaccurate? I think the main thing I've kind of said before about body count is that I think it's uh, having an arbitrary number is not very useful because firstly, you're never going to be able to get the truth out of men and women. Yeah, Men might inflate it, women might deflate it. You can't get the truth out of them. But like I said, the, the relationship with body count is you really have to look at your partner's relationship with sex. Now, if you have a woman that will say yes to anybody that gives her attention, anyone who makes her feel loved, anybody that does that if that's been the main cause of her body count the main reason of her body count is a drunken night out or the main cause of her body count is because she was feeling low and someone comforted her then that's a a red flag it's what caused the body count or if it's a man who's been on dating apps for years and years and just hook up after hook up pleasure seekers then the body count really really matters but if you are looking at somebody whose body count was built on strong connections it was built on like you know they really had a relationship with that person they constantly are saying no to lots of people more than they're saying yes then the then that person is a little bit more trustworthy so it's really more their relationship with sex there's some men i know that might be 35 years old and two girls now that might sound like a really low body count might sound great on paper but what if that guy is super overweight doesn't have a job lives in his mom's basement and is watching porn all day doesn't mean he's virtuous doesn't mean he's a great guy and same thing with a woman let's say her body count is very low but she is she hasn't had any options but the moment she gets an option she 
she goes for it. It's looking at somebody's relationship with sex and do they treat sex as an activity that they can do with everybody and anybody or they do they treat it as an experience that they reserve for the people that they're most connected to and love the most and do they do it? Do they Can they only do it with one person at a time? If somebody can have simultaneous sex with lots of different people at the same time, they're disconnected from sex and as a result, I would worry about their body count and their future relationships. So it's the context that context. matters. Yeah, and their relationship with sex. Can they have simultaneous sex with a couple of people at the same time or not? Some people, the moment they go on a first date with a man or a woman, they're sexually loyal. Other people, there might be 20 dates in and they're still keeping their options open. That's the person you should be more worried about. So one of the 